Hey everybody, Kevin here. Today we're going to talk about the interactive mouse picker node. It's a really useful tool for you to make interactive installations. I especially recommend trying it out on a touch screen and anything like that will help make it that much more interactive. Um, it's a really useful one if you don't have a media server and you're trying to make an interactive installation that runs in standalone mode. All you need is builder and let's get started. So blank node graph, um, obviously the first thing you need is the mouse picker node. I believe it's under this interactive grouping here and it's called the mouse picker. So if you drag this into your uh, node graph, we can start to look at some of the settings that it has. First is whether or not it's active, which we want for now. And there's a couple parameters here that we'll look at momentarily here. So if I go ahead and connect this mouse picker to my root, we'll make it active. Um, I'm also going to turn on our grid with Alt-G so that we can have some idea of where we are in 3D space. Um, so if we take, for now, let's just take a sphere, and we'll make this sphere a child of our mouse picker. So I have deferred rendering on, so right now it looks like it's totally dark. If we go down to the materials, we can give it some emissiveness so that we can see what's going on. So right now, if I click play and I start clicking around in my viewport, it already works. And um, one thing to note is that this mouse picker, because you're using a mouse, you really only have two axes of control. You have your X here, essentially, and your Y. Um, with the mouse, you can't really do Z, which is unfortunate, but for most of your installations, that might not really matter. You can find really clever ways to still make something that's really engaging without necessarily using Z depth directly with mouse control. Um, so the tricky thing here is right now, we kind of have this arbitrary orbit camera angle, you could say, and our mouse picker is using whatever is there. And I think it's a little easier if we set a fixed camera angle and that way, whatever we design, we know exactly which axes to put things on. So let's go ahead and make a camera. It's going to connect this to my root and I'm going to place it, let's say 10 units away from the origin. The reason I picked 10 and I'll show you here right now is in our mouse picker, you have this thing called plane offset. What that is, is it defines how far your mouse interaction plane is from your viewpoint. So if our camera is negative 10, that means that everything that's happening with our mouse interaction in terms of moving the sphere is occurring at essentially where Z equals zero. So you can change this value. If we make this a value of one or two, you'll notice our sphere got a lot larger because you're basically telling it make our mouse interaction plane two units away from where our camera is right now. And so that's very close. Whereas if we make it a much larger number like 20, that puts it much further away. So the sphere gets smaller. You can also choose different position planes here right now, our camera view plane. You can lock it to your local X, Y, and Z plane, though I typically find it easiest to use your camera view plane. So I'm just going to leave it there. And right now um, I've changed this to 20. So let me correct this and go back to 10. This is just essentially having a sphere that's moving around between our X and Y axes at a distance of 10 from the camera. So that's really all there is to the mouse picker node. I mean, if you're just looking for X, Y interaction, that right there will do it using things as a child right here. Um, there are a few other things that you can do with it and you can pull those out using the extractor node. So if we connect this modifier um, as a child of our mouse picker, in this drop down, you'll notice we have our position X, Y, Z. That's basically where our position is right now. You also have rotation values, um, though there's not much rotation control with the mouse. But the other things that you have access to are the left button, right button, um, plane offset, speed output, and direction smoothing. Plane offset and direction smoothing are just values that we've set in our mouse picker here. So those will just take those values out if you want to use them for whatever reason. But what's more useful, I would say, is this left button right button and speed output. So you can do some fun things with that where you can detect whether or not somebody is clicking for a touch screen. That basically means you're touching the screen or like a speed output will tell you how fast your object is moving. So you could have some effect where it emits more particles if your sphere is moving faster. And in the example file that I built, that's basically what we've done. So in terms of making this work, that's really all there is to it. For the file that I've created um, that you can check out, basically what we've also added is a follow or a node follower, or what's it called? Node trail, sorry, not node follower, node trail. And what the node trail does is it tracks your position of a node. Actually, I'm gonna do our mouse picker here instead. I'm gonna hide our shape. 
And then I fed our node trail into a extruded spline node so that we draw a little path for it. So do that. And now if I play and draw, oh, right, deferred lighting. So let me give this also some amount of emissiveness here. Or actually I'm gonna, I think what I did was I made a light that is the child of our mouse picker. So if we make our light Omni and give it a little bit of scattering intensity, you'll notice as I draw here, there we go. So we see our extruded spline now. And this little white line that's not going away is from our node trail. It's just got shows spline on. So if I uncheck that, it'll hide that. If you leave it checked, you can see what your history has been. So if I leave that unchecked, now I've just created essentially an interactive drawing, lighting, um, dynamic install that I can render to standalone. Um, I can, you know, install this on a media server if I, if I wanted to and take in mouse control there. So there's a few different ways you could do this. You can obviously write silly messages like, hello, terrible cursive. Um, but let me jump to my completed file and show you some other things that we can pull out of this extractor node. So here, what I've done is I've made a little readout here that'll tell you whether or not you're having a left click. As you can see, it jumps from one to zero or zero to one, as well as a right click. And I've made an effect that animates on when you hit this right click. Finally, right below that, we've got a velocity. So the slower I move, the lower our velocity is. And the faster I move, the higher, velocity it is, uh, higher our velocity is. And what I've done is I've tied that to the brightness of our light source here. So if I move really slowly, our light is nice and dim. And if I move fast, it gets brighter. So there's a great example of how you can use that speed to your advantage for interaction. Um, essentially to get these values to read out, I've used a few value as text nodes that then feed into text. So we're extracting left button, right button, and speed, and then feeding that into text nodes so that you can get a little readout here for your troubleshooting purposes. Um, for our light, we've tied in a modifier that samples the speed and then attenuates our light brightness based on how fast it's going. For this little right click animation, we've used a torus that we have expanding and also fading off by looking at our extractor right button value and then using that to trigger an envelope that I've keyframed here. So if I show you this, this keyframe envelope modifier is doing something like this where it's telling this torus to grow in size and then after it disappears, jump back to zero to be re-triggered again. To get it to fade off, I've just inverted the value and made this a subtract, and I just subtract it from our alpha value here. So that's all there is to it, really. Um, fairly straightforward. I recommend playing around with the mouse picker and trying to make some cool stuff. I think there's a lot of possibility that you can make with it, especially if you're trying to do experiential interactive installs. So I hope that was helpful. That's probably one of my shortest tutorials yet. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys make with it. Until next time, take care.